Now what I have here is an adult female Stromatopelma calciatum, commonly known as a feather leg baboon. Feather leg baboon. Feather leg baboon. And I've got a rehouser. Hello tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and you're watching Tarantula Haven. Today I am doing a species showcase on the Stromatopelma calciatum, commonly known as the feather leg baboon. Now the reason I'm doing this species showcase is because I have to rehouse her and because back here I have another Stromatopelma calciatum. That one was given to me by a friend and subscriber, Jay, and he was downsizing his collection and wanted to know if I wanted her and I agreed so I took her in. Um, well, I thought it was a her, but it turned out that it was a he, a matured male. So I contacted Amanda and asked her if she needed it, and she said that she could use it, that she had several females that she could breed it to. So we were going to, I was going to give her that, and she said that she would exchange the male for a female. Well, it didn't go quite the way it was supposed to. Um, I had another person contact me wanting to give me a male of a Dolichothelia diamantinensis. So there was a Repticon recently, and I was going to meet that person at that Repticon. Well, during that Repticon, another vendor gave Amanda a male, a feather leg baboon, and an extra female feather leg baboon. So when I arrived there, she said that she no longer needed my male, but she gave me the female that that guy had given her so that I could in turn breed my this new female to my now mature male. So that's the big old story for what we're gonna be doing today. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit nervous about rehousing this one because the uh, feather leg is known for being very skittish, very defensive, and has a very high venom potency. When I was doing my research for my Heteroscodra maculata when I was first going to get it, one of the first things I looked up was venom potency because I knew that they were an old world species and it was my very first old world species. And I found out, or from what I've read, I saw that the Heteroscodra maculata was considered the second most venomous tarantula in the world, second to the feather leg baboon. Now, I don't know how they measure that stuff. I've heard other things about Bacillotheria being more potent as far as venom and all that kind of stuff. So I'm not gonna argue with all that and I'm not gonna state that this is the most venomous tarantula in the world. But what I do know is that they are very notorious for being very mean and very defensive even to the point of almost aggression. One of the videos that I was watching on it claimed that if you are poking it with a stick to try to get it to move, not only will they grab and bite the stick, they'll also go after whatever's holding the stick. So that's a little bit scary. Now, of course, different temperaments, depend on different specimens and all that kind of stuff. So this one may be a very docile one, who knows, but they're known for being very high strung. So that's something that I'm a little bit leery about, but you know, I'll do my best to stay as safe as possible. And I use whatever precautions I have to try to do this as safely as I can. But Yes, I am a little bit nervous about it. And before I get into it, I do want to let you know that I am rehousing her into this Exoterra Nano Tall. And I like using the Nano Talls for my arboreal tarantulas because you've got the front opening door and you have a top lid that you can remove as well. This makes it a lot easier for you to get in there if you need to do some maintenance, if you need to do any kind of rehousing or anything like that. You can always access the front to get to the water dish and that kind of stuff. Or if you need to rehouse or capture your tarantula, you can also go in from the top. So two points of access makes it a lot easier for you and a heck of a lot safer, especially when you're dealing with a very feisty tarantula like a feather leg baboon. I decided to include me extracting the tarantula from the container to demonstrate how I safely remove a tarantula, especially one that is as hot as this one.
Some people might argue that I'm putting unnecessary stress on the tarantula just to get some video content. Rehousing in general is stressful on a tarantula simply because you have to manipulate the tarantula to get it to go where you want it to. But I also wanted to demonstrate that if you're calm and methodical in your movements, you can actually get a tarantula, even one as feisty as this one, to sit calmly on a piece of cork bark and allow you the opportunity to get some video footage and even some photographs. Stromatopelma calcianum, commonly known as the feather leg baboon. The feather leg baboon is native to Western Africa and it has a very large range going from Guinea down to Cameroon and beyond. Juvenile specimens of the species are often confused with the Heteroscodrum maculata, which is the Togo starburst baboon, and vice versa because they closely resemble each other. However, as the two species begin to mature, there's a clear difference between them. Yet, I still see many arguments on Facebook groups whenever someone posts a picture of one or the other asking what species it is. Females of this species can reach leg spans of up to 6 inches and live 12 to 15 years. Males are quite leggy and can also reach six inch leg spans, but will only live three to five years. They are an arboreal species preferring to make their homes in the hollows of trees, palms, and ferns. With their markings and coloration, they can blend in perfectly with the bark of a tree, making camouflage their primary line of defense for survival. This species is clearly not for beginners and it is not to be trifled with. While temperaments can vary from specimen to specimen, it is the general consensus that feather leg baboons are known to be very skittish, very defensive, and very unpredictable. I've watched a video from an experienced keeper that claims that this species acts differently from any other species he's dealt with in that if you poke it with a stick, it will attack the stick but will sometimes take it further and go after that which is holding the stick. That coupled with the fact that it possesses medically significant venom make for a species with which you have to be very careful. I've included an example of the male feather leg baboon and as you can see it is very long and lanky and its legs are very bushy and notice that it is much more dull in color and it lacks the black markings that the female possesses. The feather legs should be kept in an arboreal enclosure and in the wild they experience humidity of up to 70 to 80 percent but because of their wide range they can actually tolerate different conditions and they can be kept drier as long as you have a water dish for them to hydrate. An interesting thing I read is that when pairing this tarantula, they're actually quite gentle with each other and it is rare that the female will eat the male, which makes them relatively easy to breed and readily available in the hobby. Once again, I do not recommend this species for beginners, but I would recommend it for an intermediate to advanced keeper. All right, Stromatopelma calciatum. I feel so much better now that she is rehoused and in a proper enclosure. Hopefully she'll make herself at home and make herself comfortable, and I can pair her really soon here with that male. Uh, it went a whole lot easier than I expected. I was expecting a lot more threat postures, maybe some bolting and things like that. I had watched videos and I had even read some stuff about how 
defensive they can be and that they'll bite everything. She did bite and tug at the stick a couple of times. It's amazing how strong they are. She pulled the stick out of my hand twice while I was trying to pull her out of the uh, little catch cup there. But, you know, as far as once I had her out, I expected her to bolt. I expected her to give me all kinds of threat postures, but she didn't. She just kind of nestled herself into the cork bark and tried to make herself disappear, which is probably their best defense. You know, out in nature, if they look like a stick, if they look like the bark of a tree, then most people will just walk on by and not even notice them. So I'm thinking that's what she was hoping that she was going to accomplish. And it didn't matter how much I tried to prod her and make her move and walk she would not have it. She just gripped tight to the cork bark and like I said, tried to make herself invisible. The male was a little bit feistier, but a, a lot of the same. He did bolt on me a couple of times, so I did have to use the catch cup on him. And um, I think I got a little bit of a threat posture from him, but that was after me trying to capture him a couple of times. So he'd had enough of me. But once he got on the cork bark, he went on the underside and tried to make himself invisible. And I did manage to get him to the top side and he kind of did the same thing. He just sat there and and, you know, try to pretend like he was the bark. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm not trying to downplay them. I, they are very unpredictable and they could, you know, just change at any moment. But you two treat them gently and you don't pester them too much. And I think they are usually kind of like almost all the other ones. They will usually prefer to run or hide rather than stand and fight. Um, most of the fighting that she did was usually in the catch cut when I was trying to get her out. I was kind of hoping that she would give me a threat posture because I wanted you to see that she only has one fang. And I noticed that when I first got her, I checked on her, I opened the, the top of the uh, of the little deli tub that she was in and I kind of poked at her a little bit just to see how she was. And she did give me a threat posture then and I noticed she only had one fang. But that's okay, she'll molt out on her next molt and she'll start to regrow it. Now that's most likely because it was either kept in too dry conditions or she may have bitten something that was really hard and broken that fang off. So, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how she was kept beforehand or what happened, but she is missing that one fang. Hopefully it will regrow here normally because sometimes, you know, they have a little bit of a hard time. And um, some people tend to keep them a little bit dry, but I've been looking and researching and things like that. And it, uh, I'm seeing places where they come from 78 to 80 percent humidity so this is not a dry species and maybe that had a little bit to play in why she's missing her fang thank you so much to jay for the male and thank you very much amanda for the female hopefully in the near future i'll be able to pair them and see if i can get some feather leg baboon babies that i can send your way and that does it for me today i hope you enjoyed it if you did please give me a like if you want to see more subscribe if you want to support this channel i have a teespring store where i sell tarantula haven merchandise thank you so much to my patreon supporters and if you'd like to become a patron yourself there's a link down below in the description as well as all the others i've also provided a link to Amanda Beasley's website because she sells lots and lots of cool tarantulas. You never know what's going to pop up on her website. So definitely check her out. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas. Even the scary ones.